in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. You are now tuned in to the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dice, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. Um, so as you guys and girls can see in the description box, we're going to be talking about the 300-point run up on the Dow currently in the last two days. We're going to be talking about that stimulus package, and we want to know, have we rebounded? Prince, are we in a rebound? Right? What happened? All right. So as you come in, tell me where you're from. As always, we got the Brand Factory says, hey, family. The Brand Factory Media says, hey, fam. What's going on there, Brand Factory Media? Um, I'm going to give everybody a little time to come in. As you come in, tell me where you're from, and I will broadcast it to our live audience. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content as well. So today's topic, we've seen the Dow has bounced 300 points. And um, we see the Dow bounce 300 points, 3,000 points, I meant to say. And everybody is saying, Prince, have we rebounded? You know, we got a stimulus package got signed. What's going on? What you think? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let me put my little lip chap on. Because I want my live audience to be laughing at me. So here we go. Let's go here. We got Jim Jim. He's from Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Good afternoon, Prince. I hope you and yours are doing well. Yes, we are. We're keeping it safe. And we're studying and all of the good stuff. So behind me, for the people that's catching this, uh, catching the live broadcast and the playback, you know, I got Denver, Colorado. Thought that'd be a nice little thing or whatnot. We got Robert Reed here. He said, "I've been trading forex, bro. It is amazing, awesome, awesome. Forex is the foreign exchange market, currency to currency." Kevin checking in from DC. We got the brand factory media checking in from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Jim says, Toronto is back. Thumbs up. I appreciate it. See, I remember I remember you was from, Jim. We got Chad from Sacramento, California. Chad Shoemaker. All right, cool. Uh, Max B, can't wait to talk about the stimulus package. That's what we're talking about. That's my guy, Max B. He coming in from uh, Louisiana. Keisha, she says, hello, folks. I know she's coming in from New York. She's smart lady there. She went out and said, hey, Prince, thank you for telling me about Jets. I'm going to go get it. So we'll talk about that, too. And Amber, here she is. She's in from Philly. Amber, how's that SPXS looking now? That Sierra Papa X-Ray Sierra. It's not looking too hot right now that the market took off to the bullish side. But we're going to talk about that too. Proud Dad, always in the Atlanta, Georgia's in the building. Y'all know my hometown is Waynesboro, Georgia, a little small town outside of Augusta. But thank you there. We got Xavier. I'm just going to say Xavier, right? Coming in from Jacksonville, Florida. All right, we got Elk Prince. I'm from... Tucson, how you doing today? Tucson, okay. Tucson, Arizona. Abraham, I'm still holding strong. There's uh, there's going to be another dip. Abraham's a smart man. J Stay Hip, Maryland, okay. I was supposed to be in Maryland next week at a boys and girls club in uh, Fort Meade, Maryland to do a middle school, but that didn't happen. So, okay. Orlando Green, he said he's a new investor from Dayton, Ohio. Okay, Dayton, Ohio. Brian Mack, what's going on? He says, what's up, Prince? I appreciate that. Uh, she said, I had to jump into NXST. I, I couldn't wait. Mm -mm. We'll see. What's up, fam? Hope everything is safe. LH19, what's going on? We got Miss Colorado Springs. By the She's from my hometown. I know you. Uh, I can't say her name. Um, she's from 25, Waynesboro, Georgia. And she's down there in Colorado Springs. I'm up in Denver, Colorado. Katura. Katura. That's what it is. Katura. Hey, how you doing, Katura? Thanks for uh checking in. Glad to see you on here. Nice. That's my hometown, y'all. Waynesboro, Georgia. That's originally where I'm from. People think I was like I was talking to Meta yesterday. He was like, Man, you from Omaha? I'm like, no. You from Hawaii? No. You from Denver, Colorado? No. I'm from Waynesboro, Georgia. Robert Reed shots out from Philly. We got Kevin. Bring those vibes, Abraham. Hello, everyone. Diego, Diego, he's checking in from Argentina, all the way from Argentina. By the way, of Swainsboro, my, I remember you telling me that, proud dad. Appreciate it. All right. So we went through everybody. So now let's get to the real topic. We're glad to have this live audience. So for the people that's catching the, catching the playback, uh, the playbacks will be on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, um, uh, Pretty much anywhere you can get your podcasts from or streaming services, you can catch the playback. So don't feel like you just got to catch the live. We are uh, putting it out everywhere as well. 
So, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. I don't do too much. I need to get more involved with Instagram. I don't do Twitter either. But anyway, let's get to it. So the first thing people ask me, Prince, we know what's, what y'all want to get into first. Let's get into are we in a rebound. And what I did was, I, you know, I'm going to get into the rebound a little bit later. And what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about when the market is falling, how does it look? And we're going to get into some comp, um, some financial terms people have coined called the dead cat bounce. And we're going to get into terms people call the bear market bounce, right? So when the market is moving down, how does it look? How did it look back in 2008? Did it all happen at once? How did it happen, right? And we got Lester, Lester Saunders. What's going on there, Lester Saunders? He says, hello, over there on YouTube. Appreciate it. So now we're going to take a look at it, what it is. And if you guys got questions or comments, anything, y'all can bring them up and I will address them as we go along. So first of all, guys, we hit the peak of our market. You know, I'm going to pull up some information here. You know, we got a couple. We're going to get into the stimulus package, too. But we first, let's get into our, uh, what you call it? Let's see here. One second. I need to pull up. I want to pull up some tabs. I want to better show you guys and girls this. Mm -mm -mm. All right. No. I might have to do it that way. But okay. All right. So I'm going to put up what I pull up. We're going to take a look at the 2008 market crash first. All right. I grew this. I drew this chart myself. Right. And we're going to take a look at it here. I share mine. Yes, I want to do that. All right. So y'all see all this junk I got on my screen. Don't worry about it. I'm going to clear it up. Okay. So this is a chart from Yahoo Finance that I created, right? I went back and I pulled from the top of the market, which was the top of the market was 2007. All the way down to this red arrow is where we saw the bottom of the market in March of 2009. So the market went on a steady, a steady decline. You see this little purple line that I created. You can see the steady decline in the last recession that we experienced. And I made these little purple bubbles here to illustrate on the way down, the market just didn't go down, crash, 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 crash. They had what some people consider a dead cat bounce. And the concept of a dead cat bounce is even, even though a cat is falling, Fall, I mean, even though a cat is falling off a ceiling or falling on the floor or whatnot, it will even bounce off the floor. So stocks just don't go down, 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 right? As you can even see, even the bull market over here, stocks still had bad days. It still had bad days. It still had dips on its way up. So what I highlighted here in those purple circles is to illustrate to you, even while the market was going down, it had these bounces or what some people would consider rallies or where things like, oh, we're coming back. A month later, look at the first one, right? Then we drop some more, then boom, look at this other big rally. People that was in here in these little purple circles, they got excited and said, the market is back. Oh, yeah, we're going up. And then boom, it dropped further. And then here, when it dropped here, people got excited and they started to buy again. As you can see, it did this all the way down to the bottom. Here's the red arrow. Now, you can see that gives you a clear downward trend if you put a if you put a price uh, people this is technical data right if you put a price chart on this this will show you that this was a downward trend in 2008 but if you couldn't see all of this stuff at one time if you're living in the moments if you was in those purple circles imagine today right now when we see this 300 point rally this could be a dead cat bounce this could be a rally in a bear market and rallies do happen in the bear market, just like you have dips in a bull market. So I wanted to show you guys, this is our, uh, even though past performance is not a great indicator of future performance, but this is telling you, hey, this can happen. The market just don't go down every day. And it, it does have these turns. Imagine these people who were in these bubbles, right? I was the guy, I was in the bubble. I was looking like, okay, what am I supposed to buy? What am I supposed to buy? What am I supposed to buy? Right? Because I was like, oh, the market is turning around today. And I ran out and grabbed some stuff, didn't know, hey, we're in a bear market. It happens in a bear market. So right now, I'm not an overall believer that this is a rebound. If this is a rebound, this would be the fastest rebound out of a bear market that we've ever seen. And Trump will probably go down as one of the greatest economists that we've ever seen. Him and his secretary 
Treasury, Stephen Munch, I think his name is, how you say his last name, they would go down as the greatest financial minds that ever lived in the world. So, yes, you will see rallies as the market continue to fall. That's what happened in 2008. Y'all let me know if that makes sense. Right? So you guys and girls saw that. So I didn't want everybody to get to look at. I made that chart myself. I went on Yahoo Finance. Of course, it's courtesy of Yahoo Finance. And I went through and I illustrated uh, to show you how we look in a down economy when the market is in a downward trend. We will have rallies. We will we will have bounces. We ha will have jokes along the way. And a lot of times people think that, oh, we're in a rally now. Oh, we're about to turn around now. And that's not always the case. All right. Let's get some of the comments here. Herloon Financial, West Palm, checking in. Prince, talk to me, man. Okay, no problem talking to you. Uh, checking in from Los Angeles. Okay, we got Los Angeles in the house. Mark Wingo coming in from, that's my guy right there, Mark Wingo. Uh, what he says, what's up, Prince? Uh, hope he, uh, what's up, everyone? I hope everyone is doing good during this uh, time of quarantine. Yes, that's great. Couture says, makes perfect sense. No problem. Mark Wingo, there he go. He's in the financial industry, been in the financial industry for a long time. Uh, a guy that I look up to has been around a long time, and he's saying it makes perfect sense to him as well. We got Al checking in from Chicago. Picasso, great data. All right, I got more data. We're going to get some more data. We're just looking at some of the comments. It's hard to be patient in a rally. Yes, be fearful when others are greedy. Now, last week, just two days ago, y'all were the same people saying the end of the world is coming. Now you jump in your emotions. The same people are saying, oh, my God, I got to buy everything now. Be careful. Be careful. Right now, it's the same people. Uh, I think it said Didu. OK, what's OK, Kevin? I got you. So the same people that had Disney last year. Right. The same people that had Disney last year. It was a genius. Right. It was a genius. They, they had Disney last year. Disney Plus came out. Disney stock rallied. Everybody was, oh, I'm holding to the future. We're only going to get better. Didn't even think about selling. Nobody was thinking about selling Disney just a month ago. Disney was a perfect stock to have. Now that hard times are coming, everybody is scared to buy. Everybody was fine with buying Disney on the way up, but nobody wants to buy Disney on the way down. That's crazy to me. Uh, Lance says he's uh, from California. I mean, I got lights going on, too, so these lights are kind of blinding my eyes a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I'm taking notes. I can't. What's that say? Valley Joe, California? Hello, Prince. Prince, you've always said you haven't brought anything in the last two days. No. The only thing I made by now, let's jump into the stimulus package. I'm going to tell you all what I made by now. I haven't brought nothing in the last two days. The only thing I brought in the last two days was Sierra Papa X-Ray Sierra, a leverage bearish etf that's my insurance policy so i'm benefiting because my overall portfolio is bullish right bullish mean i think the market is going to go up over time i'm benefiting from that but i'm better than on the downside with about three percent of my portfolio let's say if you had a thousand dollar portfolio you're taking thirty dollars and you're betting on the downside so with the market in the short term i'm thinking the market is going to go down again and but in the long term, the market's going to go up. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope this is a rebound and we shoot off to thirty thousand. Because guess what? That means that that Sierra Papa X Ray Sierra that I brought it would expire worthless, and it's only three percent of my portfolio. But the other ninety seven percent would definitely make make up for that. So no, I haven't brought anything. Abraham, great minds thinking like we haven't hit the bottom. Wait till the unemployment report hits. It's going to be a slaughterhouse. Let's jump into the stimulus package, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into the stimulus package. A $2.1 trillion stimulus package was passed today. How many of you guys and girls know what is in that stimulus package? Harloon Financials, Prince, you've always, you have, okay, all right, I read that one. Did I? Okay. All righty. Hand clap. All right, there, Kevin from Facebook. Keisha said, for real. Okay, let's take a look into the stimulus package. So the first thing is, Mayweather Financial Group stimulus deal was made, but I don't see, I don't see it was signed. So the last I saw that it was signed, you know, I mean, it haven't gotten official approved, but it got approval from the Senate and the House of Representatives, so we should be good to go. Classified said, I think everything is going to drop again. I'm not an expert, just but, but ideology. 
I mean, that's what we all are, right? We all are pretty much making an educated guess. So let's look at the stimulus package. First thing about the stimulus package, $1,200 is going to go to every person that makes under $75,000 a year. If you make over $75,000 a year, that $1,200 is going to decrease. Nothing for anybody over $100,000. Number two, Families, married couples that make under $150,000 a year is going to get $2,400, right? Unemployment, people that are unemployed, they're now going to raise it by $600 a week. They're going to raise it to $600 a week that you can earn for everybody that has been laid off or pretty much lost their job for the next four months. Number three, $367 billion in loans. For small businesses, for small businesses going through this hard time, this is going to go, they're going to give $367 billion to small business. Let's pause, the, let's pump the brakes right there. These small business loans, where are these small, who are going to be the guiding force over this? This might end up into the financial industry. Because the small businesses, where they're going to get the loans from, right? You have companies like the SBA. Of course, you got financial institutions. Unless the government is going to set somebody up to give out small business loans, I can't really say. Where is that 300? Who's going to be the guiding force over $367 billion for small business loans? Because, you know, that guiding person is probably going to put a little interest on that. $150 billion is going to go to state and local government. If you do the math, if you spread, spread it over 50 states, or 51, people like to include Hawaii and Alaska. But that's about $3 billion per state. Close to about $3 billion per state. They're going to get just to uh, help them out. $130 billion is going to go to hospitals. So now when you look at the healthcare industry, $130 billion is going to go, right? 500, here we go, $500 billion is going to be able to be loaned to companies like the airline industry. So the airline industry who are going through a hard time, like a Delta, they said they're burning through $50 million a day. As we just did an episode on them, they only have about, I think, $200 million in capital in cash as of 2019 balance sheet. But they're going through, they're burning through $50 million a day or whatnot. And this is where you can profit because these companies now, when this bill is signed, it's going to be $500 billion set aside for large corporations to be able to borrow from who's experiencing hard times, like the airline industry, the cruise line industry, all these type of people. The, the other stipulation is Trump family cannot benefit from this. Trump family, if you're, if Trump's, any, anybody in Trump's family, companies can't get federal assistance. That's the other thing. And they're going to assign an oversight committee to make sure all this money goes, goes out right. So when we look at this, we're going to go back. Okay, Mark, he said Abraham is a smart man. Uh, Tyson Foods been climbing steady for the past few days. Um, I can see Tyson Food doing well. I can think Walmart is going to do very well. Costco's is going to do very well. And Zoom is going to do very well. I think it's going to shock people come corporate earnings time. Because look how many people tearing down Walmart. I mean, Walmart got empty shelves all over the country. you know. But then again, I did see some people raiding Walmarts too. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. But I wouldn't be surprised if Walmart and Costco's uh, those companies did exceptionally well because, you know, the panic, not the actual coronavirus, but the panic. People are, hey, what if they close? I went to go to the store the other day to go get a steak, right? And, man, the meat section was just cleared out, right? I had to pick leftovers, right? And I'm like, you know, but that's tell you a company like Walmart is benefiting. Costco's will benefit Zoom. Everybody's doing everything on Zoom right now. You look at all the TV shows. There's no TV shows are in the studio with a bunch of people. Everybody's doing uh, content like you see today. And I think companies like Zoom, who are in the video production, maybe like a Skype, I think they're going to see some jumps as well. Max B, killing the dollar bill too much, printing and debt. Yes, they're just printing money. They're just printing money right now. C. Lane, thank you for all that you do. When and if this drop, what is a good price to buy Apple? I kind of get into that. Mark says, the market won't bottom until the virus tops, in my opinion. Now, let's go back to this, right? 
when you're seeing this right now, we haven't even seen the side effects of the economy. We don't have any factual data on the economy right now on what's going on with the market. And what I mean by that, the market won't, uh, what I mean by that is we don't know how these unemployment, how many people are rushing to the unemployment office right now? We don't even know. April 6th, around the first or second week of, week of April, we're going to get those unemployment numbers. What are those unemployment numbers going to look like, right? Unemployment was at an all-time low just a month ago. Unemployment was at an all-time low in February. How would those unemployment numbers will look for March and April? Because we do a, a jobs report every month. How would that jobs report look in the midst of everything being shut down? So the unemployment is probably going to rise, right? Then how hard has Apple been hit? We don't know how hard Apple has been hit. How hard has Microsoft been hit? How hard has Delta, Southwest Airlines, all these companies have been talking about taking a hit, but we haven't seen a transition to the financial report. This is where I think we're going to near the bottom. I think this is going to be, that's why I'm waiting on everything, right? I'm taking bets against the market for now. Short term, I think the market is going to go down. In the long term, the market is going to go up. So now I'm looking at don't buy anything. Just wait. If I miss the exact bottom, who cares? Who cares? Let's say if you pick the bottom like a champion. And say if 18,000 was the bottom and you picked the bottom out at 18,000 and I got into the Dow Jones at 25,000 and the market ran up to 30, 40,000 whatnot. Do you think I'm going to cry later on and say, man, I could have had another 10, 15%? No. I mean, I would like to have it, but I'm not concerned that I'm going to get myself so caught up with trying to catch the bottom that I'm going to not make fundamental decisions, right? Woke one says, should I invest the money the government is sending to my household since I already have an Of course, woke one. If you're getting a, people calling it the virus check, if you're getting a virus check, every child, I forgot to mention that, every child will get $500. So when my son gets $500, do you think I'm going to go out here and uh, buy some, buy iPad or iPhone, all that bull crap or whatnot that he's not going to care about? Care about? No, I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it into his brokerage account. And I'm probably going to buy in the airline industry. People ask me, Prince, so you haven't bought anything. The only thing I'm looking to buy is the airline industry. J-E-T-S, Jet. We talked about this the day before in the live stream. We talked about J-E-T-S. This is an ETF. Got hiccups a little bit. That tracks the airline industry. I think it's about $12, $13 the last time I looked at it. It probably rallied a little bit. Excuse me, I got hiccups a little bit. Hopefully, the coronavirus getting me. <laughs> but anyway, the airline industry will benefit from the stimulus package, just like the automotive industry benefited from the stimulus package in 2008. Mark says the next few weeks are going to be interesting, especially once the Q1 reports start rolling out into the market. He's talking about those financial reports. Q1. Financial terms, guys, that's called a quarter one report. We're going into the first quarter. Every quarter, every three months, every publicly traded company must report its financial status to the market. So when you report that financial status to the market, you uh, this is what we're going to be able to see. We're going to see how Zoom is doing. This is where we're going to get to see that black and white. We're going to see how big those losses are or how small those losses are, right? How much everybody really lost during this time frame? Couture, she said, that's a bit, I said, that's a bit much going to large companies. Shouldn't companies of that size have six? You're right, Couture, you are exactly right. Soon as this, you know, they always tell us, have an emergency fund, be financially responsible. But all these companies being financially responsible, that as soon as something stops, they're like, oh God, government help me. Right. Government, please help me. I need some help. Please help me get through tomorrow. Is is it's not. Yes. Uh yes, that's a bunch of money that they have allocated to companies. So at the end of the day, I'm not a politician. I really don't care for politics too funny. Um, it's okay. I'm not, oh, Democrat, Republican, this president, this I mean, I leave that to anybody else. I just look at the financial side of the house. So somebody like American Airlines, 
Southwest Airlines, Delta. And I told you the two big guys was Delta. United Airlines, they've been filing in and out of bankruptcy when we was in a bull economy. So, yes, these companies now, I'm not saying it's fair, but I didn't create the game. And I'm 35 years old. I probably ain't got enough time on earth to change the game. So I might as well get in where I fit in for now and say, okay, they are putting $500 billion, a half a trillion dollars to the side for companies to slow down layoffs. They don't want companies to lay people off because if people, if companies lay people off and they fire people, let people go, that means these same people are going to show up on the jobs report. These people are going to go file for unemployment. Unemployment is going to skyrocket. So this is an attempt to slow down unemployment, right? So that's the thing about it. You're right. Uh, Robert Reed said, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. Harloon said, Harloon Financial said, man, I prayed the bottom falls out the market. <laughs> Yes, for a buyer. My next door neighbor, Steve, who's 72 years old, I think, he's retired. This is a nightmare for him. But for somebody at, at me at the age of 35, I think, you know, I think I got a little bit of life going on. Hopefully, do I? Hopefully, God give me enough time. But if I do, this is prime time to start investing. Harlan, um, he said one in 10% of Americans haven't been tested for the virus yet. Yes, I think those virus numbers are going to go through the roof. I might even have it. Man, I hope I don't. But I might even have it because they said by the time, you know, you could be carrying it for 14, 14 days, or not years, 14 days before you even show symptoms. So my wife works in healthcare, right? Even though I pretty much haven't left the home, but once or twice, my wife works in healthcare. So she's still working. She's been working this whole time um, while this whole pandemic going on. So I wonder every day, I'm going to have to spray her down with some disinfectant spray but <laughs> she comes home she could easily go in there and contract it from somebody bring it back home to me and wes right me and my son wes um ashley neal nfp what is nfp and unemployment is going to be huge i'm not am i am i missing something i'm missing that acronym can you break that out for me ashley and take a huge to the U.S. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, by printing this much money, you're going to take the value down on the U.S. dollar as you look at it. James Bond said 360 day calls. I think that he's talking about option trading. Are you talking about option trading? 300, 600 day calls. Oh, we got Shand Shand Shandria. Am I saying that right? She's checking in for Memphis. <laughs> we got Memphis in the house. Keisha said Jets is $16.85. It was $12 the last time I looked at it. But Jets, guys, is what, uh, if you want to take advantage of the industry that got hit the worst, transportation, you have the transportation sector, which is X Tango November, right? That's the transportation sector. If you want to invest into the whole sector, you want to drill down and get into the airline industry, you have an ETF called Jets. That's uh, Jack. Echo Tango Sierra, right? It's currently $16.85. I think the uh, transportation sector is around about $35, something like that. Then if you drill down inside, the top two airline stocks are Delta and Southwest Airlines. I can go with either one. I can take a scoop of either one of them. We broke down their financials, a little bit of their financials in one of our last episodes. Not trying to beat the index, just trying to get rich. Yeah, you're right. James Bond, I see what you're saying. He's saying that he's, so for the people out there that are like, Prince, this is so much. What am I supposed to buy? What I'm looking to get? Um, you can just get an index fund. Sierra Papa Whiskey, Sierra Papa Papa X-Ray is one. You can get VU, B-O-O-O, an ETF by Vanguard. Um, you could get, it's a plethora, SPY, the SPY. You can get the DIA that tracks the NASDAQ. But I think the sweet spot is going to be the NASDAQ. QQQ. That's most of your technology companies. Ashley said, what's the airline's index again? That For the airline is J-E-T-S. That's Jack Echo T Tango Sierra. It was $12 when we reviewed it on this episode. Now it's 16 There you go. Look at Keisha. Keisha on top of it. I'm pretty sure Keisha already loading up. So Bart Barton, I read an article last night talking about how she shareholders have direct access to airline companies profit i think it's called a buyback um you're talking i'm thinking you're talking about when the corporations buy back their stocks am i not mistaken if you do buy if the companies do buy back their stocks of course the stock value rises right 
right? Break that down. Okay, she said, thanks, Keisha. So the U.S. dollar value is going to go down. It has to go down. I mean, you're talking about printing up $2 trillion. This is a $2 trillion relief fund in the stimulus package. So my, my outlook is, if you're in the stimulus package, where can I place money? Who do I think is going to benefit? I remember when they bailed out all, bailed out all the financial companies back in 2008. And I was, you know, I, I was kind of new to the market. I didn't know. I didn't know to go buy Bank of America. I didn't know to go buy Citibank, right? Citibank, Bank of America, all those companies are going to get that bailout money. Well, just like the automotive industry, Ford, GM, all those guys got bailout money. Guys and girls got bailout money. And the list just goes on of everybody who received bailout money. But you look at those companies who received bailout money, how did they perform in that bull market? Most of them had a nice recovery. So if Southwest Airlines and Delta and all these guys get all this bailout money, they're going to do what? They're going to do astronomical numbers. So I look at myself, how can I benefit? I'm not going to sit here and talk about the politics behind it. Jim said, Prince, your channel is my favorite. One day I'm going to buy you some green tea. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I re this channel is about seven years old, by the way, too. You know. Robbery said, no farm payroll. I you said, I believe. I'm not sure what you mean on that, Rob, Rob Reed. But that money is supposed to help companies not lay off as many people, right? They're supposed to help keep. You know, keep companies on the payroll, help companies with payroll, all that good stuff. Jay Cody says, crazy. My wife worked in the hospital. I say the same thing. I spray her down. <laughs> yes, my wife works in healthcare. Which she, you know, I mean, hats off to all my healthcare people out there. I definitely appreciate you guys uh, for what everything you got to do and everything that you do. But uh, yeah, my wife, she um, she goes out. She, uh, you know, she works in healthcare administration. So um she goes out and she sees patients every day she comes in contact mostly with elder patients and to you know to, I'm, I'm just waiting for her to come home one day and be like oh yeah find out one of these patients had corona and i might have corona and so you and west oh my goodness can't believe it all right okay who we got here let's go down so you, know, you got a lot of comments coming in today jane bond said yes uh, i traded 4x nfp week and it was great okay great great do whatever you got to do. Uh, no farm. Oh, the no farm payroll. That's what you guys and girls talking about. Okay, got it, got it. NFP. I now I'm thinking about what you're saying. Got it. Sean from Facebook said, "Julie, man, not Jay." Okay. Uh, hello, friend. What do you What do you do to gain all the stock market knowledge? What courses and certifications did you obtain? Well, guys and girls, I've been in the military now for 17 years, and throughout my run, I've been a command financial specialist probably about for six or seven years straight. Along, I got my associate degree, my bachelor's degree, got an MBA in finance, Series 65. I went and got those uh, license, uh, Series 63. Um, I got Series 65, Series 63, um, life insurance, health insurance, accredited financial counselor, certified financial uh educator um just all type of stuff that's the formal stuff the informal stuff i wish i had a uh, you know i could show you my camera and show you my library my not my library but my bookshelf i have a ton of books so not a ton i got a got a nice size bookshelf i got a bookshelf definitely and that's just my physical copy that's not even counting my uh that's not even counting my um audio books so i have a bunch of audio books i got a bunch of uh e uh I got a bunch of uh, audio books, physical copy books, and then I learn from the best in the game. You know, um, I get around the Yahoo finances, the Warren Buffett's, the hedge fund managers, just following them, learning from them, reading, become a true student of the game. Harlem financials, it's a true student. Max B, is it true that the feds are buying bonds as well, Prince? Yes. Um, that's always in a uh, what you call it. That's always in a stimulus package. XTN is $45. XTN, ladies and gentlemen, that is the transportation sector. That is the overall sector. So that's going to be less risky. You got the transportation sector. Then inside the transportation sector, you got airlines. Then a deep dive, you got airline stocks. Now, the, the deeper you go down, you may find oil. But it's more risky if you buy Southwest Airlines stock, which I'm going to do. I'm going to buy my son. That's what I'm going to do with my son. Uh, uh, five hundred dollars or whatever. I'm gonna go get him some Air Southwest stocks. 
that's his favorite airline because it's Southwest and his name is Wesley. So every time he sees Southwest, that's my favorite airline, Southwest, Southwest, Southwest. So I don't want him to kick me in the head 12 years from now and be like, Dad, you could have got Southwest for rock bottom prices and you didn't do it. So, yeah. So I'm going to do that. And I think both Southwest Airlines and Delta pay dividends. So I can earn a dividend as stocks are getting ready to recover. So Mark, here is, uh, he's telling you that the XTN, that is the transportation sector, is at $45. You can invest into the whole transportation sector. That means everything that's moving, like Uber, uh, rental car services, uh, airlines in there, railroads, anything that's moving, which people are saying that's taking the biggest hit. Well, not the biggest hit. The biggest hit came from the energy sector. Yes, you're right, Max B. They're buying bonds to help the market. They're going to pump money into the to the stock market, too. What is that stimulus package doing? When you give that money into the company, you're indirectly pumping money straight into the stock market. They did that in 2008. Part of the stimulus package was to pump billions into the stock market. My brain didn't say, you know what, Prince? Just get some index funds. And if they're pumping money into the market, just go. But that whole time, I was scared to jump into the market because I always kept saying, what if they stop pumping money into the market? What's going to happen? We're going to fall again. So I was scared at the time. I just didn't jump on the, uh, what you call it. For all my doomsday people, people are like, oh, the economy is over and uh, whatever. I look at it. This, But here we go. This is the time you buy gold. Gold price is down right now. If you're someone who's looking for a down economy, this is the time you buy gold. This is the time you buy Sierra Papa X-Ray Sierra when the market is shooting up. You don't wait till the market goes down and say, yeah, I'm going to put my money in gold and bonds. Bond prices are down. Gold is down. Bearish ETFs, leverage ETFs are down. This is the time. This is my insurance policy on my portfolio. So if the market, if the market just takes off and keeps running to the moon, great. My whole portfolio will rise. Thank you, and I appreciate it. I will greatly appreciate that. But if the market does, if this is a dead cap bounce, bear market bounce, where we just seen a little jolt in the market, a little slight rally, and we're going to fall even steeper, I'm great on that because I got Sierra Poppy X-Ray Sierra. I'm going to sell it off, make 20, 30, 40, 50% on it, and then I'm probably going to buy it again. <laughs> so there we go. In the meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking to buy something, don't get on the buying spree. Every, why does, when the market rallies, everybody tune in so they could figure out what to buy? You should have been doing this two days ago. Remember, the people that's really, people like Max B and Keisha, when we saw all of this stuff, I told everybody, save your money, lock and load, and wait. Patience. SR, SR4 said, I just invested into KO. KO is Coca-Cola because it went down. I mostly want ETFs, but I really like the price of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a consumer staple. Coca-Cola is one of those companies. It's going to hold its value through a recession, but in a bull market, it's not going to be a big time rally. It's a great ad for people who are looking for a slow, long term dividend paying stocks, people who are mostly retired, right, or who are getting towards retirement, who don't want to take all that risk. Because even in this down economy, Coca-Cola is a consumer staple. People are going to consume Coca-Cola products regardless of what is going on in the economy. And when the economy starts booming, people don't be like, man, I can buy more soda. It usually don't happen that way. People are just, it's its one of those steady. It's one of those negative growth companies they like, they, like, they like to term it. Like cigarettes, right? Like Philip Morris. People don't smoke more cigarettes because the economy is doing good. They don't smoke some more cigarettes. Maybe not. When the economy is doing bad, cigarettes just kind of stay the same. Coca-Cola is going to kind of metal out and stay the same. That's why I believe with Coca-Cola. That's my girl, Keisha, out there in New York City. Says she's locked and loaded. Keisha, be on it. She has, what she's saying is that she's loading up. She's saving up her money. She has her money in her brokerage account. She ain't got to worry about her money being in her checking and savings and got to transfer and wait three business days. I got, my, I got my account ready. I got my money loaded. I got my watch list ready. And I don't think nobody in here should have more than 10 stocks on this, their watch list. 10 stocks on your watch list, right? You mean to tell me you can find 20, 30, 40, 50 companies? Don't get greedy, right? Just find you 10 that you're very good at. Because somebody with five, somebody with a portfolio of just five companies, can I've definitely beaten people with 20, 200 shares of, I don't even know what they're buying. I'm like, man, what is this? You think I'm going to go through all this? How can you even know what that is? So find five or 10 companies that you know very, very well Become a student of them. Study them like I don't know what. 
guys, if we missed the bottom, if the bottom was 18,000 and it's about to rally up to 30,000, you still got time to jump in, right? Don't become so concerned on getting the exact bottom. I'm not concerned on it. If I'm wrong and the market just shoots off to the moon, I'm going to be like, oh, I was wrong. I'm going to jump right onto the market even more as it's rallying back up, right? But I don't think we're there yet. I don't think that we hit a bear market just because we got a stimulus package deal. You know, we can't sit back and say, oh, guys, look, look at us. You know, we're fine now. <laughs> yeah, coronavirus, that's gone. Wait till these cases start popping up and more deaths started happening, unemployment shoot up, and we get backlash and all this other good stuff. All right, where am I at here? James Bond said, Boeing um, going to get the bulk of the corporate stimulus package. See, Boeing. Boeing is in the airline company, right? <laughs> Boeing has gotten beaten down very bad. Boeing is the number two. James Bond, did you notice? Boeing is the number two company of government contracts. Number one being Lockheed Martin. Number two is Boeing. Boeing has a very, very big, uh, they, they get government subsidies all the time. They are the number two government contractor source, meaning that the government pays them to build planes, drones, all type of stuff, and they buy for the military. So they're the number two largest contract receivers. I had to pop my neck there for a second. Mark A. Wingo, what's the ETF that the bearish on the market? That is Sierra. Yeah, Sierra, Papa, X-Ray, Sierra. Sierra, S, P, Papa, X, X-Ray, S, Sierra. It should be about under $20 right now, like 15 bucks right now. Proud Dad, don't forget those gold stocks, Prince, when they... Uh, when they print this money and dilute the value, yes, that's why I just told everybody, this is the time to get your gold, right? You can get a gold ETF, gold ETF, Julia, Lima, Delta. That one's a little bit more expensive. If you want a cheap one for about $15, go to India, Alpha Umbrella, I-A-U-L. It's kind of crazy. I know all these symbols at the back of my head. I think that's kind of sad. I need to get a life. <laughs> But those are gold ETFs. Those are things that you can buy. When gold goes up, those ETFs are going to go up. Right? And I haven't seen a big, big rally in gold yet, surprisingly. That's proud dead out of there out of California. Okay, let's get in here. Kevin. Kevin said, you mentioned auto industry bailout from 2008. Airlines is getting their bailout now. Should we get into just now or wait for a bit more? Um... I'm probably going to jump into Jets now, probably today when I get off this live, because I got to go do some homeschooling. I'm home with Wes, right? Uh, but um, I'm probably going to get into it now because right now it's $16. Let's say if it does drop down to 12 or 10 and I'm off by a little bit, I'm not overly concerned. But you know what? I'm not going to buy it today. I'm going to wait till a down day on the economy comes. You're right. I'm not going to buy it today. Uh, yes, I'm not going to buy it today. I'm going to wait on a down economy. Wait till a down day. Don't buy anything bullish on a – if you believe the economy, you're trying to buy something, today is not the day. You don't buy when everybody's happy. You don't buy, oh, everybody's happy stimulus package. Oh, stimulus package, you know, we're going to get out the virus. Ooh, air, stock market rallying. You're going out there buying when everybody's rallying. Be fearful when others are greedy because if you're patient, probably by the end of this week, you're going to see a big dive day or you're going to see a down day. That's when you go buy all your stuff. I learned from me the hard way. Because what I would, I have something on my watch list. I'm like, man, I'm looking to get this. And I'm seeing that price go up, go up. I'm getting now the fear of missing out kicking in. That's what happens. Everybody now is the fear of missing out. Oh, man, man, it's still going up. Look at Boeing. Boeing went up 15% yesterday. It's up another 5%. I'm missing out. So now you're missing out. Now you prematurely jump in. And then the next day when it starts to go down, you're like, man, what happened? So just be patient. Wait. Everybody gets scared. Terrence, hello, checking in from Nova Skoska, Canada. Love your show. Terrence, checking in from Canada. Man, we're international in this thing. Can you believe it? We got Argentina. We got people out in Canada, the UK, all over America. This is crazy how social media kind of works. James Bond, Apple is below $1 trillion valuation. I think Apple is ripe for the picking. Be patient, James. Be patient. Definitely not today. We got some more sliding to do. All those retail stores, they closed down. All that money they lost, 
all that money they still paying out, you know, I want to see how that's going to look on those financial reports when they start rolling in. Crawl 808 says, is this live? Of course this is live. The only way we do it. This is live. Lance Morgan, why are cruise as lines sparking right now? Royal Caribbean in particular. What Lance, what we just went over? Bell out. Stocks don't trade on what's happening today. They trade on the future of the, what you call it? The future of what's going to happen in the future. So we just listed that $500 billion is being put to the side for airline stocks. That's why they're rallying. Everybody said, oh, bailout money. There we go. Ooh, we're not going to go bankrupt. Everybody gets happy. And the whole market is up. But Lonus E came across your page. Me and my buddy are happy in. Where is the hen ready for this market? <laughs> Where, where's the hen? <laughs> he said, ready for this market in Palm Springs. Okay, yeah. Look at uh, Chad. That's a uh, guys. That's Chad Davis. He's a producer of this show. He's the executive producer. He's behind the scenes a lot. Uh, he does, you know, he's pretty much my manager, really. You know, uh, you know, he manages a lot of stuff in the foundation from the show. Um, you know, so y'all give a shout out to Chad Davis. Chad, he said, great information you're putting out. And it's some great comments and questions coming in from those watching. Got it. He says M1 Finance is a good platform. M1, M1 Finance is a good, it's a smaller platform, not as popular as the TD Ameritrade and E-Trade, but uh, from what I've heard and seen of them, yes. And I do like, they do do fractional shares. I will give M1 that. M1, I know they do, M1 Finance does tune into the show. They have reached out to me before, but uh, M1 Finance is, is a uh, good platform to use. I haven't heard anything bad from them. And when I looked at them, I never seen anything bad from either. The good thing is they do fractional shares. That's pretty cool. Taylor, why is Royal Caribbean skyrocketing? Do you see it falling back down? Um, of course. What goes up? All this, you know, jumping up or whatnot. Don't worry about it. Everybody's excited because stimulus money. You know, it's like Friday payday. Everybody, you know, everybody get excited on Friday payday. Everybody go out and buy stuff. Everybody go get drinks. Everybody go hang out, go to the pool hall, go to the bar. Because it's Friday, it's payday. Because people are seeing, oh, the stimulus package, this $2 trillion stimulus package is about to get signed that this is going to be our lifeline for particular companies to get them through this hard time. So people are like, oh, they're getting a bailout. So people are trying to, companies are trying to position themselves to benefit off the bailout. That's it. That's why that company is going up. Harloon Financials, what do you think about monthly dividends paying stocks like MLP or Reefs? Um, it all depends on your taste, Right. Monthly paying dividend stocks like uh, Bravo Lima Victor is a long-term ETF bond that pays a monthly dividend. It pays about 3% the last time I looked at it on this year. It's probably a little bit higher now since the dividend yield is probably higher now because the stock drop. Uh, you have companies like, um, who else pays a monthly? It's a couple of companies that they pay monthly. Majority of them pay quarterly. And I told everybody, if you buy AT&T, Pepsi, I think it was Coca-Cola. Pepsi, Coca-Cola, AT&T, you'll get a dividend every month. So it's ways to set up. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up if you want to get a monthly dividend. Monthly dividend paying stocks don't get so, unless you are elder and you're looking at ways to generate income and be kind of safe in this market, that's when I would look at dividend paying stocks. But I wouldn't look at dividend paying stocks for a young man that's for their money to grow. If I'm looking to grow my money, I want to get a little bit of both. And what I mean by a little bit of both I want that Apple. Apple is a company that it was doing very well in the bull market and it was paying a nice dividend. Microsoft was doing very well in the bull market and it was paying a nice dividend. Those are the companies I want, right? Those are the companies I look forward to. So don't, don't get so caught up in a dividend because dividends are not guaranteed, right? Dividends are voted on like every quarter. So they can cut dividends just like Ford did, <laughs> right? So even though Ford stock was going down, people held on to it because they had a nice dividend. Then Ford woke up and said, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, we're cutting that dividend. You saw that, right? Same thing we just looked at those financial reports yesterday. When we looked at those financial reports on Delta and Southwest Airlines, we saw how much the dividends were or whatnot. Hold on here. I got to give a shout out. Lionel Moore, he donated $9.99. I appreciate that. That's Lionel Moore from Seeking Alpha. He does a great article on Seeking Alpha. 
I appreciate the donation, um, not now, but for everybody that's tuning in, that's catching playbacks, instead of donating to me, I'm I'm fine, I'm okay. I would rather for you to get the groundbreaking children's book series called Wesley Learns to Invest. Wesley Learns about credit. Wesley Learns about insurance. So if you want to support me, you like the content, you think I'm doing great stuff, get the children's book series, right? I'd much rather uh, better better than that now. All right, let me go back up and get some more of these uh, questions to come in. Okay. All right, let's see. I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. But thanks. I ha- I will highlight. I had to skip down and highlight uh, Mr. Moore for coming in. Um, I definitely appreciate the uh, support. Definitely appreciate it. Okay, we already went over those. What was the transportation x-ray tanga November? Come on, Keisha, you was there when we went through this. We went through the whole industry together, and you was commenting and stuff like that. So Keisha from New York, it's X-Ray XTN. That's the transportation sector. Oh, look at Amber. Amber, that, man, y'all, y'all already on top of it. I'm I'm sorry. I sound crazy. I know I'm behind. Amber, Amber from Philly already got it. Keisha says, thanks, Amber. Appreciate it. Lance Morgan, don't want to see cruise lines go back down. Wondering if I should buy more shares of them. Be patient, Lance. Be patient. Finances tell you, um, the technical data is going to tell you what to buy, right? You're going to see how much of a mess they're really in when you get into that uh, market, right? You're going to see how much, when you get to see their financial reports. Wait till you see Carnival's financial reports. They're going to lay everything out for you. You're going to be able to see how much money they made. You know, when those financial reports come out, I'm probably going to do a live review and look at their balance sheets. We're going to look at their uh, Q10K. 10K is quarterly, 10Q is annually. So we're going to look at that 10K report, that 10 kilo, people like to call it. We're going to look at it, and we're going to compare it. So just wait. Keisha said, yes, sir. Okay. Boeing. Boeing is a great company. Boeing is a great company. Um, It's the number two government contractor. Um, It was a great company before. Of course, it's taking a big beating right now because what do Boeing do? They make airplanes. What is down right now? I'm pretty sure Delta and all these people are not trying to buy airplanes right now. They're cutting that. Ghost Hunter said, "What are your, what are your, what are your ten on your list?" Ooh. Well, on my hit list, I've given out that hit list. I've given y'all uh, Berkshire Hathaway, Microsoft, Apple, Google, uh, the airline industry, maybe JETS. Or, uh, I'll probably get some Southwest Airlines. I'll probably get some Delta. Um, and those like those are my top ones. That Ghost Hunter. Mark says SP. Yep, that's right. That's it. J. Rodder, do you think unemployment numbers will affect the market even with the stimulus package? Yes, unemployment numbers will affect the uh, market because that's a lagging economical indicator. If people are not working, that's an automatic indicator of the economy is not doing well. So with the stimulus package, the stimulus package is a way to slow down future unemployment numbers. So if they give the stimulus package, hopefully they're saying, hey, Delta, maybe they won't lay off as many people. Maybe Delta won't fire that many people. And if Delta don't fire or lay off people, it will slow down unemployment numbers. So that's how they kind of go in hand to hand. Trump said, hey, hey, look, Delta, got it. Hey, I understand everybody's having a hard time. Here's some money for y'all. Please don't lay those people off. Right. He's trying to stop the bleeding. That's what the stimulus package is to do. Remember when the federal government, Jerome Powell, came out and was cutting down those interest rates? That was a way to slow down the economy to say, hey, 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 look, look, wait, 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 to stop that knife from falling, right? He just said, LOL. I can't even say your name. We're going to say Isaac. Oh, man, my eyes are killing me right now. Hey, Prince, rookie and first time here. What are your thoughts on GE, a dead horse? I'm not messing with that GE horse. It is a good, you know, um, I don't really follow GE like that. Um, I know people who follow it. I know some people told me they invested into it. Uh, it was a big, good old staple company. Is it right for a rebound? Yes. But it's just too much going on out there. It's not about why would I want to play around with the struggle bus? If you're a first-time buyer, why worry about the struggle bus when you have other companies out here doing well? You know, it's just like if you go to get an investment, somebody call me and say, hey, Prince, man, uh, would would you invest into my new restaurant? And I got this restaurant turning a profit, doing well. I got another restaurant that's struggling and I got another restaurant that, you know, is trying to figure out its way. It's a startup. 
which one you think I'm going to make the investment in? Why would I want to mess with a startup and take that high risk, even though it could be a high reward, but it's a high risk of failure, first, especially when it's your first time. Then the second one is, uh, why would I take the company that's on the struggle bus that could turn around and might come back when you got all these great companies out here that's already profitable, that's already doing things, companies you know right now, you're logging on to Google, you, you're watching, probably using a Microsoft product every single day. The struggle bus companies are for later on, right? The companies that are in the struggle car and the struggle plane, you get them later on in your portfolio. First time buyer, you get the for show dough. I like to call it for show dough. This is dough, straight cash. This is money that's guaranteed. These companies are profitable. They are strong. They got good financial names. You start with them. Don't come in and get the riskiest stuff. I made that mistake. I've jumped in. The first things I tried was penny stocks, then a dollar stock, then a cheap stock, Ford because Ford was cheap, GE because it was cheap. People love GE because it's like eight, nine dollars. People love Ford because it's like four or five dollars. You know, people love these little cheap companies, names they heard of. Ooh, this one. Right. And I've done that. And that's the most riskiest thing you can do. And you double the risk being a first time person. Get on the for show dough companies, companies that are good, strong, financially, a lot of cash on hand, good, strong brands that you know is going to make it. Then as time go on, then you can look on for the little struggle companies. Oil, I don't like oil. The reason why I don't like oil, first of all, when America started fracking, we became the number two producer of oil, meaning we can go out in the middle of the ocean and pump oil. And now oil price is dictated upon what's that comp that that uh that council, the OPEC, if I'm not if I'm saying it correctly, how much oil they want to produce. If the Saudi prince gets pissed off, he can just start drilling oil out the drilling oil out the ground and just wreck the whole oil prices. I ain't got no time for that. Plus, everything you see being created new, nobody, everybody's trying to get away from oil. All the new cars are electric. Uh, everybody's every new piece of technology, everything going into the future, everybody's trying to lose use less and less oil. So me, I'm done. I, I, I you know. I ain't finna sign up for the struggle bus or whatnot. That's for some risky, risky top end stuff. Not saying it won't be profitable, but oil right now, it's a natural resource, but it's dictated upon who's pumping the oil. You know, you got Russia and, and the Saudi prince. That's what kind of got us into this mess, oil and the coronavirus. Oil, the Saudi prince, he had a meeting in Russia, got mad, went back and started pumping up, uh, started pumping up all this oil. And when you when demand stays the same and supply increase, what happens to price? Good old economics class. Demand stay the same for oil, right? Demand for oil staying the same, but the supply for oil increases, that drives the price down. So that's why oil had these, you know, you can get a barrel of oil for a bucket of chicken right now. And yes, it may rally. I think those good old golden days of 2008 when oil was over $100 a barrel, I don't see that happening right now. Especially when America, if Saudi Arabia and the Middle East start tripping about the oil prices, we can go out into the middle of the ocean and get all the oil we want. So I ain't got no time for all that. Too much politics. He said, yeah, GE is half. Chandra, you mentioned that you're going to get West shares of Southwest Airlines. If I want to buy stocks too, how do, how, how do I know how many to buy so new to this? Right. This depends on how much money you have. Right. Wesley already has a portfolio and West portfolio. I think he got McDonald's in there. He got some McDonald's. He got some Apple. He got some Google. He got some Amazon. Uh, he got some leverage bullish ETFs going to the future. Uh, he got the NASDAQ, the Dow. So this is just adding on to it. I got 500 bucks. What I'm going to buy with him, uh, you know, some bull crap that he's going to grow out of and throw away in two, three years. I'd rather invest with him. So it depends on how much money you have. Right now, I think Southwest Airlines was like 35 bucks. So if I had $500, um, you can, if I only had $500, I would get him, I could, you could get him two or three shares or him or her for your child. So it depends on how much money you have. Mike Oliver, what's going on, Mike Oliver? That's a fellow sailor of, I served with Mike Oliver. He retired a long time ago. Not a long time ago, a couple of years ago. How's it going, Mike? How's retirement treating you? Thanks for checking in, by the way. Katuja, remember, folks, trade like a robot, even during these frantic times. Look at look at Katuja, smart young lady. She was always smart anyway. So she's very smart. She's saying, take your emotions out of it. Right now, you're feeling like, man, I'm missing out. 
The fear missing out is what's kicking people to make them want to jump on their watch list. But trade like a robot. She's right. And the worst thing that, a, that kills a trader or a buyer or an investor is the emotions. I'm guilty of it. I've seen stuff where I brought it and I thought it was a good company. It started going down. I was like, man, I'm stupid. Why not? Man, I don't. You know what I mean, I'm, why did I buy that? Then a the company goes up. I feel like a genius. I did an episode when, when the market was doing good over the last 10 years. Everybody was a genius. Oh, Prince, I brought this company and I brought that and I got Tesla and I got this and I, everything is just going up. Everybody's a genius. But it's times like this is when you're going to see who the real investors are. Mark said, I prematurely uh, jumped in today and brought a few shares of Wendy. See, the fear of missing out is what got Mark. It's season as Mark is. Mark, you got to admit it. It was the fear of missing out. You're watching that company go up, and you feel like you're missing out on that particular company. There you go. Sha gave it a hand clap there. J. Cole Media. What do you think about media companies like Codcast and Viacom? I'm not. No. I mean, look at me today, right? Uh, I'll I give you guys a personal story. I had a meeting with uh, PBS, right? Uh, doing a show with uh, PBS, taking what I do and taking it to PBS or whatnot, right? PBS was going to require me to get up and drive to a studio to sit down in the studio or whatnot. And as many times I've been on television, nobody knows me from television. Everybody knows me from social media. So social media is the way if I had to do some marketing, I would put majority of my marketing into social media. Social media is cheaper and it's faster, right? Social media is the reason why I exist. Traditional media did not meet, did not create who I am, right? It was social media. The traditional media is newspapers. Who's reading newspapers? How many of y'all got a newspaper subscription? Exactly. Radio. How many of y'all are tuning into your favorite station every single day? And I'm not talking about watching it. I'm not talking about streaming. I'm not talking about watching it on YouTube. I'm talking about old school with your radio, listening to it at the barbershop. Little to none. Television. I don't even have a table. How many people got cable? My son, Wesley, is nine years old. Ten years from now. When he moves out, he better move out. When he moves out and goes out on his own, he's probably not going to get a cable subscription. He don't even know what that is. Cable subscriptions? Whatever, right? So, uh, no, I'm not dealing with that. I think that business is, is in a bad spot. Uh, what's going on there, Sean Sanford? He said, I sold it. He said, I sold and brought today. I gained $5,000, but I lost a, uh, $1,300 in, but I'm not staying still. Um. Good idea to sell. Today is a sell day, not a buy day. You sell today, you wait. Sell today and wait. Terrence says, thanks for your show. I'm loving it out in Canada. Nice. Al, New York State, coronavirus totally climbs to 20%. Woo, look at that. There we go. 30,000. Look at Lionel. He said, facts. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Lionel Moore, that's another guy um, I look up to over there in Seeking Alpha, put out great information. Uh, definitely guys. And he, you know, he donated to the channel today. I definitely appreciate that. But if you really want to support me and what I do and what keeps us moving, go out there and download a, a copy, an ebook, get an ebook of Wesley learns to invest and play it for your kids at night. Uh, one of the, one of the book series is a, get an ebook or paperback or whatnot. If you want to support, you know, all right, where I'm at, man, y'all got a lot of comments in here. I'm getting lost. Can you talk about McDonald's? McDonald's. McDonald's, I like that company. I always like the company. It's the largest franchise in the world. Um, I love that company because it's the number one franchise in the world. And even in this economy right now, people still buy it. My son loves it. Yeah, I don't go to McDonald's. Every time he sees a Golden M, he always want a hamburger or chicken nuggets or whatever. He's a kid. So some type of reason, them Golden M's knows how to. That's a brand. Those go. I can create a, my burger is way better than mcdonald's and my son would say dad i want mcdonald's i can make some chicken nuggets at the house but he would love mcdonald's i don't know what those golden m's and that clown but they figured it out they got it broken down to a science now it's a machine it's a real estate business more than anything else so i gotta give the mcdonald's that's why i like that big strong brand that's paying dividends and it did very well in the bull market it too is getting beat up of course but uh not too many. It's probably going to thrive because not too many people go to McDonald's and like, hey, honey, you want to go to McDonald's, just go chill and hang out? No, nobody's trying to go play in a coronavirus playpen. Or nobody's, who sits down, who goes to Walmart, uh, not Walmart, who goes to McDonald's to have a meal, to sit down and enjoy a meal on going to McDonald's? Not too many people. It's a grab and go place anyway. 
So now that everybody's in the grab and go, so is McDonald's. <laughs> B Mac, what's going on? He said, Do you think the whole transportation or just jets is better? Um, jets will have a bigger upswing because it's more uh what's the word I'm looking for? It's more concentrated, right? Transportation got everybody, it got Uber, it got airlines, it got the whole industry. Jets is more concentrated to the airline industry, J E T S, right? Harloon Financials, I have 50 shares of Forbes, hurt my heart when they cut that dividend. Of course, I know it was. And you played attention to my other shows, you heard me talk about Ford. Ford. I'm a cop. It's your time. It's your, the truth. Th- oh, he said, I'm the, okay. He said, I'm the truth. Thanks. Appreciate it. Balonis or whatever. Uh, yeah, Lionel Moore said, Wesley Learns are great books. I own them. I appreciate that, Lionel Moore. He donated and he got the Wesley Learns series. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Next, Clear Powers. Why do you think Boeing stock will drop again? Is it a good time idea to buy? I think the pressures of the market. You know, right now everybody's happy. Stimulus is going on. Oh, we're thinking recovery and whatnot. But I think that um, we don't have a hold on this corona thing yet. I think you need to be patient. I think the whole market is going to, uh, it's not done yet. You know what? I'm going to give y'all another, y'all want another one? I'm going to show y'all again. Let me see. Can I find it? One second. I'm going to give y'all a little quick for the people that's on here late. All right. There we go. This is what a dead cat bounce looks like. This is a dead cat bounce. You see how the overall trend of this market or this stock is going down, right? It's all time high was 27. You've seen this big gap and you see the dead, the dead cat bounce. Watch it. Ooh, boop, and everybody. And right now we could be right here seeing a rally. And when, and as you see this downward trend, notice this stock didn't drop every single day. You can look at what my cursor is and see it had a, it had a run up over here. It had a run up over here. You know, it didn't go down every single day. But you got to step back and see that we're in a downward trend. And even in a downward trend in market, you're going to have bumps like here. And that's what's called a dead cat bounce. When you see that cat just woo, 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 everybody's like, everybody's jumping in. Oh, this is time. I got to get in. I got to get in. Oh, I got to get in. And next thing you know, next month, you could have been like, man, I could have got a way better price. Right? These are the people that jumped in right around this $18, $19 point. And if they would have waited, they could have got it for $13. That's all I'm telling. That's all I'm saying. Don't get caught up in a dead cat bounce. Proud Dad said, where can I get your children's books? Man, my children's books are everywhere. Audible, they got, they on Audible. Uh, I think some of them are streaming on Spotify. They on Amazon, eBay. Uh, I'm pretty sure a link is probably in one of my description boxes. But if you type in Wesley Learns on the internet, they're on barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com, uh, some everywhere. Anywhere you can pretty much find and buy a book, you know, they're not secret. They're on iTunes. Yeah, they're on iTunes. I know that you could download an ebook and audio book on iTunes. Uh, they're everywhere. Just Google it and you can uh, find it. Bank stocks. Yes, bank stocks are going to be in line because I'm wondering. When they're looking at this $367 billion for loans to small businesses, who's going to control it? I think the banks are going to get this money. They're going to give this money to the banks, right? And the banks are going to have to loan so much to small businesses. So banks would definitely benefit from this. Amber, they said, look at Amber. I'm already on. I don't even know why I said anything. She said, Proud Dad, they're on Amazon, Barnes and Noble websites. Yeah, they're on Amazon. And I did a book signing out in New York City. We did a book, two book signings here in Denver. We're supposed to do one in uh, DC. But if the attention is there, that's why I tell people to go purchase the books because if you get the books, that's what helped me move, you know, by having numbers. That's the only thing they care about is finances. If people show up and people buy those books, then it'll spread. I'm independent. All independent, all independently done. And next year, you're going to have book four in the series, too. And yes, it's titled behind my son, Wesley. Wesley Dice. That's not a coincidence. All right. Yeah, I just spoke about GE. Lester Saunders. I'm from the Bahamas, and I have no experience about investing. How how do I go about it with tech? Okay. First, 
get you an account, become a student of the game. Tune in, you're doing the right thing. Tune in to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anybody that's talking about finances and investing, pick up you some books, uh, go to investing conferences if you can, um, create you a dummy account, a virtual trading account. Um, that's You're getting to trade the real market against uh, finances and start studying from there. Okay, 300 trend. He says bailouts going to consumers or to ensure private jet riders and bonuses of corporate for jet. You already know. Their philosophy is if we take care of Delta, it'll take care of the regular people. That's a lot of people's philosophy. If we take care of Delta, Delta is going to employ him. If we take care of Delta, Delta is going to employ Prince. And then if Delta takes care of Prince, then he's going to take care of the economy. That's how a lot of people look at it. That's their philosophy. Jack of loops. <laughs> Jack of loops. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And people are saying, hey, it's messed up. Why is he going to corporate America? But but they're also, they also have unemployment benefits, right? They're gonna they're gonna first they're cutting everybody a check up on their, you know, they're cutting everybody every day Americans a check. And it's going to unemployment benefits. That's the regular people that's gonna help out too. Hey Prince India, I'm from Florida. Should I continue to invest monthly into VU through my Roth for my kids' college? colleges who are six years old now yes you should and if the market takes another dip you buy two shares keep doing it you're smart you're doing you're utilizing something called dollar cost averaging you're just buying the same thing every month regardless of what's going on in the market options yes option if you're good the only thing bad about options is you got to have timing with options options have an expiration date right so options has an expiration date that's what you got to worry about with options Terrell Jones, what up, Prince? Love what you're doing. I know you said it's better to invest in blue chip companies. That's for show dough companies. <laughs> I should have said that for show dough companies. So for show for show dough companies, and I'm saying that, I'm saying that's for sure money, right? You know, certain companies are going to make it through. They're going to be well. These are big, sturdy companies that are just going through a hard time. Like right now, if the Los Angeles Lakers, I was just talking to Metal World Peace about this on his live yesterday. If the Los Angeles Lakers said, guys, since basketball season is down, we're hurting, would you let us borrow some money? Who wouldn't make that investment? Because everybody knows the NBA is going to come back on and Los Angeles Lakers are going to do just fine. Okay, so he said, what up, Prince? What are you doing? I understand about the Fashodo companies, but what are your top five speculative companies to come through this race? You know, I gave this out about 15,000 times, but Apple is going to come out. Microsoft is going to come out. Berkshire is going to come out. Google is going to come out. And you can throw Amazon on there, too. Those companies have over $100 billion in cash. Uh, they were big, sturdy companies before. They're the top of the industry. They were trillion-dollar companies before. And I think they have enough clout and resources to get through this. He said, I'll put my money in Tesla before messing with oil again. You're right. You're right. I would probably choose Tesla over oil. Proud did said thanks, Amber. Appreciate it, Amber. After the live show, I'm going to go buy me some XPX. <laughs> Appreciate it. Harloon. He said, Little Wes is doing better than <laughs> Wes is doing better than me, man. But that's what I wanted to do. I wanted Wes to be better than me. Uh hopefully, um, Wesley, uh, you know, uh, hopefully he becomes a good, young, productive man in society and goes on and Makes I hope he comes back one day and be like, Dad, you're stupid. Let me show you how to really invest. That's what I hope, right? Or he might just grow up. Right now, he says he want to be a police officer. He might grow up and say, man, I hate what my dad does. I'm going to do something else. But whatever he does, I want to give him a better opportunity than what my dad gave me. My dad's a great man. He gave me a great opportunity, but I want to give it to my son a little bit better. Terrell Jones said, paying that companies like Tesla. No, aluminum, yes. Virgin, Galaxy, those are the companies that's supposed to be going off in the space. Tesla, no, they, it's going to be hard for them. <clears throat> they were struggling during the bull market. They got a little bit more time. Just a little water here. Keep my throat moist while I'm talking. But, yes, I wouldn't mess with Tesla and Virgin Space. You're talking about space and Tesla, right? He's talking about Virgin Galaxy. That's SPCE and Tesla. Not right now. Not in this economy. What's a good leverage bullish ETF? Sierra Popper X Ray Lima S P X L. Sierra Popper X Ray Lima. Mark, he asked, "What's a good leverage bullish ETF?" Shonda said, "What's what's the best app to use to buy stock?" 
Uh, how you doing, there, Miss Shanta? Coming in from Facebook, the app I like to use the most. I like TD Ameritrade, E-Trade. Um, those are the top two. <laughs> I like them, but I heard Fidelity does some good things. I heard M1 Finances. I don't really do the Robinhood. I'm sorry. You know, Robinhood, the only reason why Robinhood has a name is because it had free trading. But now that it's free trading, has gone away. Um, you know, it's not, not it's free trading is still there, but TD Ameritrade does free trading. E-Trade does a lot of free, free everyday trading. Not everything is free, but everybody's kind of taking on that persona. Nobody in the industry is charging. You have Charles Schwab there. Those are the ones I probably mess with. Now, now I said facts. I appreciate that line, Al. Uh, Dion Davis, TTD, was a good buy. Yes, he's talking about, I think that's called desktop uh, TTD. We looked at that one the other day. It was a good buy then, but wait for it. Um, Mr. Isaac says, I think he's from the Bahamas. He said, I'm interested in the airline sector. What would you recommend, ETFs or single stocks? ETFs, new trader, get an ETF first, then you jump into some single stocks, right? And if I will only mess with the single stocks, I mess with the top three in the industry. Dion said, if you're going to mess with the media, best to buy TTD. Yes, I, I wouldn't buy Com and Comcast and cable companies. <coughs> Think about it. People that are like 16 right now, they're not going to buy cable. They don't even know what cable is. Getting 200 channels. Who's who's going to do that? These young people, this new generation, once the about the 45 and up, 50, 45 and 50 up crowd dial, they're not going to know what buying cable is. They're going to know Netflix, Hulu, their tablet, YouTube. That's what they're going to be dealing with. All the way from Argentina, Diego. He said, well, I use the newspaper to get my avocados mature. <laughs> to get his avocados to mature. That's what he's saying. That's what you use newspapers for, but you don't use it for media, right? XPXL good XPXU. I don't even know what that is. That sounds like utilities. Let me look that up. I think it's a short. I think that's the same thing as the uh, bearish ETF. Diego Dion said tomorrow's going to be a down day. Only buying stocks that are at the price I want today. Yes, I won't buy nothing today. Wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow's a down day. Pharmaceuticals. Uh, be like, no, I don't like pharmaceuticals because you got to get the stocks at the right time. That's the bad thing about pharmaceuticals. They go like this. They fly like this. They just consolidate, moving side, moving sideways. Then all of a sudden, you know, oh, I cure Corona. Boom. Then they shoot up. Or, ooh, I got a patent. Boom, then they shoot up. Then it's like, oh, my patent is gone by for 10 years. Boom, then they shoot down. I ain't got no time for that. I ain't smart enough for the pharmaceutical companies. I'd rather get something like an aluminum or another healthcare stock to pick out a pharmaceutical company. And this is these all these little small pharmaceutical companies. They go sideways, and they just shoot up when they discover something, and that's too late. And I can't pick who's going to be next. I ain't got no inside information like that. I'm not smart enough. We stocks are up. If traded options, I'm going to short them. Yes, marijuana stocks, you know, everybody's up right now. He said a bucket of, yeah, yeah, you know, you could get a bucket of KFC or a barrel of stock right now. I seen somebody do a meme like that. That was funny. Uh, Keisha said, hit the like button, people. Only 14 likes and 58 people watching. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I don't know what you wrote that. I see about 70 people watching. I don't know how many likes. I'm not getting it on this. But, yeah, hit the like button if you like the content. That's how I can tell when to keep going and all of the good stuff. Thanks, Jim Jim. Uh, Clarence said, thanks for your response. Definitely going to wait on Boeing to see what happens. Yes, wait. If Boeing continues to take off, jump in. I would come back home and say, man, I'm wrong. You need to get on that train, right? But I don't think it is right now, guys. We're in a bear market. In a bear market, you're going to see rallies. You're going to see bounces. Exactly. <laughs> he said, He said, uh, 300 trying to say, true, don't hate the player, hate the game. LOL, good on you. Yeah, I feel like I can't sit here and argue about, oh, who got the money and the government is corrupt. I can sit here and do that and go into my grave. Hopefully, I got 40 more years or 50 years left on this earth, but who knows? I may only have 10 or 20 years on this earth, and I'm not going to spend them arguing with a politician. I'm sorry. I'm just going to try to make the best I can out of these years that I'm blessed to have and uh, create a legacy for uh, myself and my family and move on. <laughs> That's not me.
I might change when I'm 40. I don't know. Uh, Bling Blong said, I made some good money on VA options today. Good on you. So I'm pretty sure he got some calls on VA. Uh, Lionel said, BRK, Apple, and S SRG. Let's see what SRG is. I'm not familiar with SRG. Burke, I'm pretty, I know that's Berkshire Hathaway. Oh, okay. But I don't know. SRG is unprofitable. No P ratio. Lionel. <coughs> what's going on with that profitability? They jumped up 40% today. I see that, but that could be what you call it. Too late to buy AAL. I think that's American Airlines. No. Just be patient. Ooh, probably Jets. Jets is cheaper. He said, would you invest into the MAGA or Jets? MAGA doesn't have an index. MAGA is Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Apple. For me to get one share, of, if I got one share of Microsoft, that's like 150. Amazon is like 1100. Google is another 1100. Uh, and Apple is like, I don't know, 200 and something. So you're talking about I got to spend $3,000 just to get involved with the MAGA. Or I can just go take 16 bucks lunch money. <coughs> I think that's what I brought my steak for yesterday. Take that and you can buy Jets. And I get a broader index. Okay, he named out a couple when he's saying um, Shell or whatnot. Lionel. But guys, I'm about to get off here shortly. My eyes are hurting me. <laughs> The, uh, I'm going to go through these comments real quick. Uh, video games are good to go into now because everyone is quarantined at home. Mm, that's a good one. Who was the online game? I forgot. Take two. Take two. TTLO? Take two? Take two might be a good one. because that's. The, I think they own the League of Legends and I think they own World of Warcraft or something like that. So, you know, you know, if I was in the League of Legends, I'd be playing the crap out of it right now. All right? Look, I got some on mine. I don't know, it's my camera. He said, what's a good price range for Berkshire Hathaway? I don't look at the price range. I look at the, right now, Berkshire Hathaway is a good company. Berkshire Hathaway owns things like Dairy Queen. That's Warren Buffett's company. You guys know about Warren Buffett. So um, I can't really say, I, I haven't looked at, looked into that one, but definitely not right now. Give it some time. Do you think Facebook would be a good investment? You know, I think Facebook is going to shock people. I think a lot of people are on social media right now since they're home quarantining. I'm seeing people create memes left and right. Look at me. I'm going live. I'm on Facebook live right now. Will Roco be a good investment? I got to look into Roco. Brian, uh, Roco, um, I got to look into it because I have to. Uh, the last time I looked at it, their finances didn't look too pretty. Right, they might do good because of everybody online streaming, but we have to see. Kalisa Mac, Kalisa Mac, she says hello, showing love from Hawaii. Thank you for tuning in from Hawaii. There we go. Max B, do you think? What do you think about POR? It's an energy company. Now the energy energy sector is going to rebound the most, I believe. Let's look at POR real quick. And Max B, you already know what I'm going to look at, so I'm going to assume that you did your due diligence. You did. Okay. You know that PR. Okay. You got a nice little dividend PE ratio. Um, let's look at a year to date. It's been declining. Let's look at it for the last five years. Okay. Hmm. It had a pretty good run. Okay. Its peak was $62. Portland Energy. Okay. Portland General Electric Company. That could be a good one. I got a little more into it, but it passes the first smell test. Um, Harloon Prince, we're waiting, man. Um, Harloon says, Prince, we're waiting on that course. I'm ready to pay for it right now. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it's, it, it'll come one day. It'll come one day. Maybe. We'll see. Mac, yeah. F-O-M-O. -O, fear of missing out. Everybody's having a fear of missing out. What are your thoughts on Fundrise? Fundrise is a pretty good company. Um, it's a real estate company. Um, I haven't dealt with it. I've seen it. It sounds good from my um, outlook on it. But I have to look more in the fun rise, you know. Dion said TDD is to trade desk. Basically, anything you do on your phone, computer, television, being cooked, man. TTD sounds like a good one from what you're telling me, right? I got to look. We did look into it the other day. I think we compared it to AMD, and it did look pretty good. Uh, Tammy, new to this, I learned a lot. Wish, it said, wish, wish I saw your video before buying today. Exactly, right? I just brought Jess today and already up. Thanks. <laughs> he said, he, look at it. He already made some money. Congratulations. 
Uh, looking for a good buy on EA. I'm not going to look into any more stocks because I'm trying to get through everybody's stuff um, because I'm, I'm about to get out of here. My eyes are hurting. I have a lot of lights behind, right? Not a lot. You know, I'm a dark skinned guy by nature, so I need a lot of lights. And it's a green screen behind me, as y'all already know. So these lights are, you know, when I'm sitting here for a while, it kind of hurts my eyes. Activision, you're right. That's a good one. That's a big one. Yep, Activision, good one. Couture, thanks you for tuning in today, Couture, and participating. Great show, Prince. Great to see Burke County Finders doing well. Uh, be blessed, brother. Appreciate it, appreciate Couture, for tuning in from Colorado Springs. She's doing amazing things. She's in the uh, Air Force, you know, Air Force officer doing great things. And uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Al, I said, thanks for another day of information on my way to buy some SPXL. Good. Hopefully good for you. Whoa. See, right when I gave her a shout out, she had to come back and say, go Air Force, sink Navy. <laughs> She's in the Air Force. You know, I'm in the Navy. I've been in the Navy now for 17 years. So I knew she was going to come back and do something. But anyway, guys and girls, I thank y'all for tuning in. I got to get out of here. I got some stocks to buy, and I got some homeschooling to do. I got to go get Wesley. He's probably upstairs playing on that tablet all day long. I got to get him off that tablet, make him do some writing and some reading and all that good stuff. So anyway, let me see you guys. Terrence says, thank you. Dion says, great job. Really enjoy the content. You're helping a lot of people. Much love from Brooklyn. Okay, appreciate it. Jim, thank you for all your knowledge again. Coming in from Canada. Thank you all for your knowledge again, Prince. All the best to you and yours. I wish all you guys the best until the next video, podcast, uh, cartoon, whatever y'all see me do around the globe. Um, y'all can catch us on catch a playback on iHeartRadio. You can catch us playback on um, Apple, all the podcasting platforms out there. So I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Peace. I'm out. Thanks.